pretty dead set on music from a very early age, uh, being inspired by two things. The Beatles, seeing the Beatles on TV in my whole neighborhood, this tiny town in upstate New York, everybody was into the Beatles. We had Beatle boots, we had trading cards, a new record would come out, we would just, you know, go over the cover front and back and wear the records out. Between that and the fact that my sister had a guitar and I didn't, and I was jealous, <laughs> it's like, I want to be the next one. And it was very rare back then that a, a kid for their first guitar, I was eight years old, would get an electric guitar. And I thought that was the coolest thing in the world because it looked like the Beatles guitars. And I took lessons right away. And combined with that, my, my mother was president of the Arts Council in our little town, and we would have people travel through and they'd sleep at our house. And I'll never forget, we had a guy from Argentina several times named George Morel that was a classical player. He would practice during the day for hours. And uh, I just thought the whole thing was fascinating. Uh, I do remember when I was 12, I had probably a couple different teachers by that point, I announced to my mother that I wanted to be a professional musician. And I remember that so well because she said, well, honey, it's, it's a very competitive business. When you're 12, it doesn't really have an impact. Competition, that's what I want to do. <laughs> Move aside. <laughs> The Michael Jackson tour is what really sold me on the power of rehearsal. Before that, I had played in cover bands and fusion bands, and typically we'd say, okay, we're going to learn these songs for the next show. We would get together, rehearse for three hours, and do the show that night. And I know the nervous feeling of, I, yeah, I played with it a million times with the track, and then playing it with the band is another level, and playing on stage, all the other elements of the battle zone are in play, and you might space. It's very easy, just something will catch your eye and you go, oh crap, where, what was the first chord of the bridge? But with Michael Jackson, my God, we, it was like joining the army. We spent a, a month as a band in one room, singers in one room, dancers in one room. I mean, it, it doesn't take a month to learn those songs, but I'll never forget Greg Fillingaines. Once we all felt comfortable that we had the tunes and we could run the whole show, he'd go, okay, now let's focus on groove. And that I, I'll never forget that moment because, you know, I thought I had it, <laughs> you know. And James Brown, for instance, he would have his band play the same thing for two hours, two chords for two hours. And when you do that, there's going to be a point where you lock in beyond what you were locked into before. And then we had another month. Once we joined all together on a big sound stage with Michael, then we started rehearsing with costumes and choreography and all the other elements that we could expect on opening night. And I had enough experience playing, you know, semi-big shows for me with 500, 1,000 people, which was pretty rare. And I know the nerves. It doesn't matter how good you can play it in your bedroom. You get on stage and it's like, what happened to my hands? <laughs> you know, they're not even talking to each other. So... Even though I felt very, very confident when we took off to Tokyo, I had never played for 50,000 people before. I didn't know how I was going to feel. And I was so sold on rehearsal once we played that show, and I felt no nerves at all. You could put 100% of your brain power on performance and giving to the audience rather than just not even seeing them because you're worried about the next song. So... I've heard people say, oh, I don't want to be over-rehearsed. I've never been over-rehearsed, ever. Because I think every chance there is to do the tune again is another chance to make it better. And it's never, ever going to be perfect. So <laughs> there's always that, you know, it's this good, and let's try to get to here. J just like improving as a musician. It, it, of course you have goals, but you never arrive anywhere because the goalpost always shifts for the rest of your life. 
So um, that's what keeps it interesting. Writing for me is a reactive thing where I'll generally start with a, an aspiring drum loop and just jam mindlessly for an hour, maybe two hours. You tend to go through all the stuff you know, stuff you've done a million times, and eventually you, you get into flow, you get into that zone where something new comes out or some creative spark of an idea excites you because it's adventurous turf, something that didn't exist an hour ago. And that has its own momentum and you, you try to build on that. It's a lot of fun just being alone with it and watching it develop. I imagine an author feels the same way about a book. You have an idea about the next chapter and the character, and um, there's a momentum that, whether you're working on it directly or you're taking your dog for a walk, it's working in the background. And, and it's generally when you're away from it that the, the best ideas come. Of course, with anything, with an invention, with anything, the idea is the easy part. And the idea is the fuel and it's just a question, is the fuel strong enough to keep burning to the, the final thing? I think the zone or flow is why we keep abusing ourselves and getting on planes. <laughs> it's the hope and the memory of that happening. And when you get there, there's nothing like it. And sometimes I have found myself in the zone where there's almost two personalities and I step outside for a second and go, wow, that sounded good and that ruins it. And it depends on so many factors. If, if you're not hearing things the way you need to, and feeling that support where you can just flow and soar over the band with a solo or melody, it, it can be a, a real battle. Improvisers are 360 improvisers in that when you're playing the melody, you're always searching for a little bit different way to play it. I think we naturally get bored with ourselves and we're always stretching. The solo is going to be much more wide open than playing the melody because it's, it's a blank canvas. Especially when it, when it comes together where you have a good sounding room and you're 30 dates in that's when you feel most comfortable to take chances. You're always trying to do things that you either haven't done before or in a different way, um, different nuances, different octave. I think that's what makes us thrive is anytime you can do something new and surprise yourself, that's a win. And that's exciting, and that's what keeps you wanting to grow.
I have studied how the brain learns and it's changed how I rehearse. Basically, when you learn something new, there's a synapse connection. And the more repetitions you do, there's actually a physical size change in that connection. So I tell people, think of it as starting as a hair, and then a string, and then a rope. And then when you have 200 repetitions under your belt, it's a chain, and it's not going anywhere. And, and I tell students in particular, that's the reason you have to play things slowly. Because if you play so fast that you're making mistakes, you're programming the mistakes. So if you get it right 75% of the time and you think, great, but 25% is wrong, you get on stage and your brain's going, which one do you want tonight? How about the 25%, <laughs> you know? Yeah, I, I don't play well under pressure. I don't enjoy it. It just makes me hyper aware of what I'm doing. When I was playing with Jeff back in Tokyo and I knew it was being filmed and there's cameras in your face and I remember just feeling bummed out after the show, thinking I did not play my best. Um, years later, I look at the video and go, it was fine. That's just where your brain goes. Uh, another time I was playing with Jeff in Las Vegas and Immediately, I step on stage and I see Steve Vai in the third row. That's all I could think of the whole night, just the awareness of his presence. I've known Jennifer for many years, and uh, she's another one that's just completely committed to the instrument. And obviously, if you're going to be chosen by the chosen one, Jeff Beck, to play alongside of you, you've got to have the goods. I don't know if there's a way to get beyond it other than building your self-confidence over the years. But when you have respect for somebody, and it's kind of funny, I mean, I have the ultimate respect for Jeff Beck. Playing with him on stage is comfortable because of his personality. However, I noticed that if the band was playing and he was out front listening, I was, yeah, get on stage, this isn't good. <laughs> you know, because I, I felt, I, I guess, judged. Although he was always respectful, uh, it's just a different thing. I think the, the worst thing, and probably all musicians are guilty of it, is the comparison game that can kill you that can make you stop playing music there are times when i'm on stage with jeff beck going what am i doing here and ultimately i mean we are stupid creatures most of us know better in a lot of different areas and we keep screwing up and the self-talk can get really dark but ultimately with with any art it's about your voice nobody can do what you do exactly the way you do it so at this point, I know I have my own voice. I know I have things I've been working on, and I have a musical personality. Um, and that's, that's given me confidence. Sometimes I can see a great show, and I'll go, uh, what am I doing? <laughs> you know, Because it, it's the comparison game, it, which is poison, is what it is. Un unless... It can inspire you and give you positive energy. It's poison. There definitely is something different having women in the band and one band in particular I can think of the guys were very resentful that I was given the position of musical director so I I can hang you know I can be one of the guys 
If you're going to swear every other word, I can do that too. <laughs> I can drink beer with you. I can hang at the wet t-shirt contest. Well, maybe not for very long. But um, I always put out the energy of let's be a team. And there, there was a lot of pushback about that. And it was a drag. And I, I would go out of my way to, to accommodate them and make them feel safe. Like, I am not a threat. I'm just doing my job. Uh, sometimes it's going to fall on deaf ears. And I think women in any job run into that sometimes. I think there's no better time in history for women and creativity right now. It's, it's kind of... It was kind of shocking. When I was with Michael Jackson, Prince had already had Wendy and Lisa, very high profile. Billy Idol had a woman in his videos. And I thought, ah, the revolution is now. 1987, 88, nothing. There was almost nothing for 30 years. And I, I think it took the internet for one thing uh, so girls could see other girls around the world, you know, whether they're just playing in their bedroom or whatever, to feel that it's okay to jump in the boys club because it was a boys club especially what I do uh, playing I, I guess aggressive music and it, throughout history it has not been thought of to be ladylike to be aggressive in any way <laughs> so um, there's a, a lot of stereotypes to get over but now it's so encouraging gosh I I, I'm starting to collect names of women because people are always saying, who else is out there? A lot of them are exotic, a lot of them for other countries. I just got turned on to one from Bulgaria the other day. Don't ask me to pronounce her name. Uh, there's one in Indonesia that's kicking butt. All of a sudden, it's popping up. So there's a lot of support. And not only that, but now bands are looking for women to balance it out. Thanks to Michael Jackson and Prince and anybody along the way, Jeff Beck. That's a big deal. When you get icons of that level that say, yes, I want this change. I want to experiment and be adventurous and see what they have to offer. Then the followers make it the norm. So I, th I think it's the way in probably most creative arts that uh, women year by year, uh, despite some forces that don't want it to be, are becoming more powerful and more confident and more productive and creative. <laughs>